We are bringing in these artists who are phenomenally talented, who have this beautiful global perspective. Whether you are someone who sees yourself in the cultural or artistic performance that is on stage, or whether you are someone who is outside of the genre and you're interested in learning more, there are so many ways to feel that type of connection and to really understand the beauty and the diversity that is Philadelphia. Intercultural Journeys was founded in 2002. The original founders were Philadelphia cellist Udi Bar David, Carl Haas Cravanio, Shell Thompson, and Majid Alsaya. Udi, who is Israeli, was playing and people who were from the Palestinian villages were hearing this music and understanding him as a brother, was the word that they used, as someone who is very much more human than the dividing lines they had drawn around themselves would allow them to see Udi as. This idea that we do have these identities that are so important to us, right? But they can either be used to bring us inward and to be used as a shield, or they can be used as a beautiful place to springboard from, to show the depth and the grace of your humanity. IJ has sort of three chapters, and that was the first chapter. The second chapter was with artistic director Alex Shaw. He brought in a much wider variety of genres, a much wider variety of global perspectives, and it really, in many ways, reflected his background as a world percussionist. Over the last year or so, the seeds have started to be planted for what is IJ's third chapter with IJ's new artistic director, Marla Burkholder. A real looking at the city to see who is here and who is creating and who is working in these excellent connective ways to produce really phenomenal, really compelling art. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carly Rappaport-Stein, and I'm the executive director of Intercultural Journeys. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight to Love is a Rebellion. In spring 2020, all of our big plans for our concert season came to a slamming standstill with the really devastating pandemic. So as a small organization, one of our assets is that we are nimble we put our two spring concerts online. We created a playlist where we pulled in different videos from the artists, some of which had never been shared publicly, as well as interview snippets into one large public playlist that was then followed by a question and answer session with the artists. How do you hold your center? How do you stay centered when you are performing an ecstasy-inducing song? It's a... Uh... It's challenging. I can't say that uh, um, it is something that um, is always a, a, a hundred percent possible. Um, it is ecstasy inducing. It was part of our year-long season devotion where we used faith and spiritual traditions as a springboard to bring in artists who use their faith or spiritual traditions in their musical or performative traditions. I think that education overall is really central to what we're doing. We are bringing audiences in who may or may not have a familiarity with the artistic and cultural background of the artist on stage. We had a really wonderful cross-gender dancer, Dadiq Nini Tawak, an uh, Indonesian uh, gentleman, come to Philly. One of the members of the Indonesian community described him as a cross between Michael Jordan and a Disney princess, which gave me a sense of just how special uh, Dadiq was and how big a deal um, he was. But what was really lovely is that one of our friends and contacts spent time talking with us about what folks in the Indonesian dance community would be particularly interested in seeing and helping us develop what would turn into a week-long set of programs with master classes and really learning from Dadiq in multiple ways. In terms of educational programs though, we've done uh, multi-day residencies at different high schools. We usually match up a lead teaching performing artist with teachers already in the school to create really interesting and powerful learning 
opportunities. Because I believe that, like I believe in the power of words to heal. I'm from the District of Columbia, city of imperfection, where homeless people sleep beneath the monument's erection. Type of place decisions made by which you be affected and mayors caught smoking a rock might still get reelected. It was a really powerful final experience, especially listening to the students and what they came up with and what they shared and the different ways that they found to connect to each other. Where are you from? Now, I know that can be a difficult question for some people. This season is just a complete 180 from what we would normally do because of the format. We are all online. The focus is on the stories and voices of women and girls. And we're doing that through two projects. The first project is happening this fall, and it features four fiercely talented women who are sharing their life and their art with us. You know, I just do what I do. Fortunately, I hide my flamenco. They're by the way, too. Rhythms, motions I could connect to that I was not allowed to connect to. It, it, was, it was so natural for me to be the only girl, to be the only feminine voice. It was, I didn't think twice about it because my mother was the only girl. Uh, through my dance, I wanted to create choreographies, tell new stories, and create my own versions of these stories. We have a second project called When I Sing. It's a project that we're doing in partnership with Sister Cities Girl Choir. We're also working with lead composer Ruth Naomi Floyd and poet Denise Froman to create a work that starts by examining the life and legacy of Marian Anderson. It really connects the different generations of Philadelphia artists. Marian Anderson, who is a historic figure, Ruth Naomi Floyd and Denise Froman, who are each incredible artist activists in their own right. And then this choir of young women who are exploring their own voices and finding ways to be active participants in life and their own story. To participate this year, it's just as simple as going online. And you can sign up for a ticket to view the performance. The tickets are free. Though of course, as any nonprofit, we hope that the music and the stories and the performance will move folks to contribute. And that's where we are now, really looking at Philadelphia, really bringing in powerful voices, and really looking at how we keep the creative heart of our city beating.